How you doing, everyone? It's a low-key intro today. I think we got a low-key show going. So, <laughs> welcome to episode 18. This is the Shockcast. Joining me today, we've got Ryan Meitzler. Say hello, I thought, Ryan. I, I thought you were about to do an ASMR like stream or something like that for this week. Oh, like, <laughs> welcome to the Shockcast. Uh, no, I can't. I'm done. I can't. That's creepy. Out. I can't do it. <laughs> it creeps me out too much. Oh, hello, no, I'm everyone. just being Mark Cerny. <laughs> <laughs> Also joining us today, we got Chris Conlon. Say hi, Chris. How you doing, Shockcast? No, no, no. no we're cutting no. it. We're and, not and doing no. that. Oh, come to the Shockcast. No ASMR oh. this week. <laughs> All right. So uh, right now, clearly, we don't have Giuseppe with us. We're having way too much fun. Um, he's at <laughs> Tokyo Game Show, uh, and we will be talking Tokyo Game Show a lot next week. This week... Uh, we're kind of doing a little bit of a throwback episode, and by throwback, I mean nostalgia. We've never done anything like this, so I guess it's not really a throwback in any regard. Well, it's uh, not It's not Throwback Thursday today, so it's Throwback Wednesday. Yeah, Hashtag. but they might be listening to this on Throwback Thursday. Hey, then it will technically be Thursday, so. All right, good. Uh, <laughs> so generally what we're going to be talking about today, we're going we're gonna to go a little bit off the beaten path. We are going to, first and foremost, talk about what games we're playing, because we always do that, and all of us are playing a lot of games. Uh, we may have a special guest joining us, and by special guest, I mean Steven. I just ruined it for you. Deal with it. Um, Steven Santana may be joining us later, and if that happens, the video will be all messed up. You'll see it if you're watching us. By the way, join us every Wednesday for this running uh, shit show. But every Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, welcome to the Shotcast. We should just start again. This is just awful. Anyway, so... Or amazing. Or amazing, yes. Um, very low energy. A lot of us are reviewing games right now. I think Ryan is currently juggling, like, what is it, like three or four different reviews? A bunch. It's a little. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, when your biggest complaint is yeah, you're staying up a lot and playing video games, it's really not the end of the world. It's a, it's a pretty decent thing. But we are tired. We are very tired. <laughs> Especially uh, when it's 100-hour uh, games like Dragon Quest, which... Uh, oh, boy. boy. <laughs> um, also, uh, other things we're going to talk about today. We're going to... I don't know if you guys have seen it. If you follow DualShockers, if you follow the website, you might have noticed a uh, feature bit that Ryan organized. Ryan, can you talk about that feature? Uh, yeah, sure. So this past Monday happened to be uh, hashtag National Video Games Day, or to regular people out in the world, National Video Games Day. Uh, so basically just a, uh, a fun day, one of those fun sort of social media holidays that you wouldn't actually know is a real holiday, but it happens to be. Um, so basically just a day to sort of celebrate, uh, you know, video games and the hobby around the world. Um, so you can check it out on the site if you go to our editorials page, where I just did a little, uh, editorial where we had each of the staff kind of contribute a paragraph or two, just sort of about your favorite gaming memories or a lot of, uh, origin stories. Uh, I was disappointed though that Joel did not contribute one because he has an amazing picture where he's basically N64 kid. Uh, and it's, it's great. <laughs> That's terrific. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of really good, if you want to get to know us a little bit better, you can read that. And there's a lot of really fun, cool stories that people just talk about their, you know, getting into games, their favorite games growing up. Uh, yeah, it's a lot, it's, it's cool. It was, it was fun to put together and read. What's up, Dalo? Dalo's in the comments, everyone. It wouldn't be a shock cast unless he was here. So we don't have Giuseppe. We do have Dalo. That is close enough. Um, anyway. Yeah, we're going to be talking a lot about that. We're going to share our own personal stories. So, uh, you know, if you didn't read it yet, hopefully go read it. But you also get a little flair of who we are as gamers. I don't think Chris contributed, so he'll be a grab bag. I'm brand new, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm shock cast exclusive. It may be a surprise to no one, but Chris Conlon has never played a video game before. He just comes on and shoots the shit every podcast. I don't really know. That's why Luke... so much conspiracy theories coming out of me. I don't know. If, uh, I don't know if Luke can criticize because he hasn't seen Star Wars. So you know, that's. Uh, I never said I was a him. good like... geek. I'm just a good uh, video game nerd. That is all I need to be, uh, as far as I'm concerned. All right, so let's start off. What have we been playing lately, uh, Chris? Let's start with you because I don't actually know what you've been playing. Uh, whatever I can. <laughs> Uh, I've been working a lot, so it's it's in the meantime. It's really just like I pop onto uh, my PC, been playing Mass Effect Three for some nice throwback multiplayer, and uh, I hopped on my PS4 and played GTA before uh, last night with Joel. Uh, so mm. that was fun. Really? I didn't yeah. see you on. I, I was got playing Joel GTA online away too. Away from his children. 
Wow. Yeah, I, we, we wanted to join you and just blow up everything you had, but for some reason we didn't. <laughs> we should have. <laughs> All right, Ryan, what are, what are you up to? Uh, I've been playing a bunch, uh, basically since uh, since I got back from vacation a couple weeks ago, and now I'm trying to kind of catch up. Uh, so re- for in terms of review stuff, uh, right now it's Dragon Quest Seven: Fragments of the Forgotten Past, aka the longest game known to humanity on for 3DS. Uh, very fun game. Uh, I played a little bit of it when I was a kid, and so I was kind of glad to go back and jump into this. Uh, that is one of the, not the downsides, which is one of the things, that it is a long-ass game, so if you're looking for something to, like, lose your life to, that's a good, good option. Um, then second longest game I've ever played, Witcher 3, is the one <laughs> that, uh, I've been playing in my spare time. Okay. Uh, so actually, I finished the main campaign of that, I think, like, a week or two ago, and then I'm gonna start on the DLC You're not sure, though. You don't know if you, fin- you for all you know, you're still halfway through the campaign. No, no, no. I finished okay. like like the main stuff. I finished the and credits now I, rolled. I have the yeah, the credits rolled. Okay, uh, and uh, I have. But, I'm going to start the DLC. So, how much Gwent have you you played? I played a ton of Gwent, Chris. You want to throw down the the new Gwent game's <laughs> coming out? Well, I'll show you my Gwent skills. Uh, Yo, you want a Gwent? The uh, <laughs> the other uh, the only other. Um, or no, you know what? I'll make that face like you know when Geralt challenges someone to Gwen and then he just stares at them. He's like, like the really creepy, like <laughs> determined smile and stuff. Yeah, basically. Uh, then the only other thing is uh, Recore on Xbox One, which I reviewed, uh, so you can check out there. Uh, How'd you like it? F- fun game. I think it. Uh, you know, I ended up giving it a six, where I think there were things, a lot of things I liked about it, but. Um, you know, I think, especially with a lot of reviewers, I kind of agree where there's a lot of interesting ideas, but it's very mixed on how it executes them. Uh, the best and worst comment I think I've seen, like, I think the, the what sums up my feelings about the game was actually a tweet from uh, Patrick Klepek from Vice Gaming where he said that the game felt like the uh, a PlayStation 2 or a GameCube platformer, which is both its best quality and its worst. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like a game that we haven't seen since that generation. We're just kind of, uh, you know, except things maybe like Ratchet and Clank or Jack and Daxter, that type of game. But it also has a lot of issues where it feels like a game that's from last generation or two generations ago. So it's it's cool and it's fun. I don't know if it's a game that everyone's going to like, but I think it is enjoyable, especially because it's forty dollars. So got it. So yeah. wait, you know, you gave it a six. That that's a bad score, not a bad score, because the comment section went wild on it. <laughs> I think most people were actually pretty agreeable that they weren't. You know, they weren't saying like, oh, you know, f this game, blah blah blah. I think you know. People were, you know, realized that it wasn't it wasn't getting great scores, but you know, I think six is more that I kind of consider a mixed score. Like, I think I'm willing to give things a six, you know, like give things that have a six or something in that range a try. You know, it's not something I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm never gonna play this. So, I think it's a, a solid game. It just has a lot of issues. I think that prevent it from being really, really good. Right. All right. Well, that's good to hear. Um, myself, I've um, as reviews editor. I get a mix of really good games and also the games that nobody on the team has time to review. And, like, it's one of those cases, like, someone needs to review it. I'm the person. Uh, So I'm kind of straddling that. I've played a lot of great games. I talked last uh, Shockcast about playing Inside. Inside was fantastic. I think I gave it a 9 or a 9.5. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um just, you know, you have to be the kind of person who will appreciate, who really appreciates, like, the art of game design and the art of, you know, cinematography in games. And there's a lot, you know, a lot of the DualShockers audience falls into that category. But Inside's fantastic. I played Phoenix Wright, and Phoenix Wright is consistently amazing. Like, that's that's just a great series. And I think it's so great because there are no competitors in that. Like, mm-hmm. there's no other lawyer games. Kind of. Maybe. Well, there was there was L.A. Noir, which is kind of you know. Kind like. of yeah. I'd say maybe Dang and Rampa a little bit uh, with, with the interrogation, not the inter- the uh, the survivorish last battle things. Mm. Um, but besides there that, there was that one mission in Mass Effect Two. Never played those. Wasn't uh, wasn't Manny and Grim Fandango a lawyer too? I th- wasn't he like a or travel like a, agent? No, he might have been a uh, maybe yeah. I I forget but. Yeah, so um, <laughs> Phoenix Wright is, or the Ace Attorney series is just, like, if you have a 3DS, first off, you don't have a lot to play right now. You're waiting for Pokemon anyway. Uh, or you have 100 hours of Dragon Quest to get through. Or you have 100 hours of Dragon <laughs> Quest to wait for it. But uh, really, like, if you just like to smile for, like, 15 hours straight to the point where it starts hurting, 
Like, Phoenix Wright is just a game full of puns and awful jokes that loop around to being great. Um, besides that, things that I have on my list of review. Actually, I'm going to get up. You're going to see my underwear. So I'm going to let you guys talk for a little bit because I need to show... Uh, Your underwear? Yes, my underwear. I think I'm wearing <laughs> South Park underwear for the reveal for the new South Park today. But, um, no, I got this great, like, limited edition. This indie... Um, uh, it's an indie group uh, developer licked mm. something. Uh, li- their their game is Lick Spear. It's si- it sounds like that. It's it's an old like super 80s slash early 90s like retro th- uh, themed kind of like Angry Birds meets uh, um, meets Plants vs Zombies. And they just did, like, this great... Like, they sent me this promotional thing, and it was so good I had to review it. Uh, besides mm. that, I'm currently downloading Forza Horizon 3 and uh, Pez uh, Pro Evolution Soccer. I'm not a soccer fan, but I'm going to try it. I, I will be a soccer fan. Um, and, yeah, I think I think that's everything I'm currently reviewing. Anyway, I'm going to switch to you guys. I'm going to go look at my underwear um, and... <laughs> Let's start this conversation on what was everyone's first we're, – we're going into the no, nostalgia bit. But what was everyone's, like, first intro to gaming? Was it a big brother who kind of dragged you into gaming? Uh, were, were you always – like, was your family into gaming? Were your friends into – what was – you know, what was your kind of draw to gaming? You can go first, Chris. I, I still feel like this is slowly becoming an ASMR stream. <laughs> yeah, so it, 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 you know, we need kind of like uh, – we need, like, the ham horn or something. I'll try and download it. It's something <laughs> to, like, liven us up. I, I, I mean, you're showing us your underwear. Isn't that lively enough? Oh, boy. You don't even know. Oh, baby. I mean, All right. please? All right. So, anyway, <laughs> go ahead. You start off. So, I mean, my intro, I, I don't even remember the name of the game, but my mom had bought me, it was, like, a Fisher-Price, like, fire truck game. Where it was literally you would just drive around a maze to go rescue a cat out of a tree. Um, and for some reason, I loved it and couldn't beat level two. Probably because I was three years old. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't get like, uh, I didn't get the siblings love gaming except for my, when I was a slightly older on the N64, my sister used to play me in Mario Party all the time. And I don't know what it is. But to this day, I cannot beat her at Mario Party. Everything else, stomp on her life. But Mario Party, I cannot win. What about you, Ryan? Does that depress you? Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, very this, much is sad, so. this is the sad I'm story. I'm so bitter of, about it. This I'm is the sad, so bitter sad story of Chris's, uh, Chris's childhood. So <laughs> Then again, I relate because Mario Kart back in my day was pretty competitive. So that was, uh, you know, that was always a tough one. So. Um, so first game that I ever played, uh, I'm gonna have the typical answer and say Super Mario Bros. I used to play that all the time. I think I had a Sesame Street game for either NES, I think it was on NES, that I had this, like, random Sesame Street game that was great. Alright, one second, we actually have Steven here now. Hello, hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Uh, right now, the entire screen is fucked. We're gonna gonna fix that. Um, (laughs) he's fine, he's fine now, like, if I... Right. Oh, you mean the stream screen? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, the, just the str- like the con- the stream. Sorry for anyone watching this on video. We we wanted to add Steven in, but um, what what yeah. happened? Oh well, everything shifts over. It's a, it's a whole big process. Oh, we just oh, talked. Okay. We just talked about you for the last half hour. So. <laughs> so Steven, what I want you to do is I want you to tell us about your experience gaming. What was like? How, what brought you into it? Oh, uh, okay, so basically when I first started playing video games, it was the Sega Genesis. My father had one. He played it very often with my mother's brother. There's actually a a somewhat infamous story in my family history where my mother was in labor with me, and they didn't want to bring her to the hospital because they were busy playing Madden on the Genesis or some other NFL game or something. Uh, So that's a a rather infamous story between my parents um, that they tell. Um, But yeah, I, I grew up playing uh, a lot of Sega Genesis, and then immediately we got a PlayStation when that came out. And I was lucky enough to have a family friend who my father knew somehow, I don't know if it was through his job or something, who also happened to live nearby us, who would create pirated copies of PlayStation games. And I I don't know. Um, (laughs) What I do know is I still have them in a box, and they are basically plain CDRs, 
and they just would wow. write on them the title yeah. of the disc or okay. the title of the game. Yeah. Um, it was it was very good for me, even though I didn't understand it at the time that you know I, I was getting these free games. All I knew was, hey, this disc doesn't really look like the other discs that I have that have <laughs> box art, but hey, <laughs> but hey, it works. So why right. should I why should I complain? Yeah. Um, so I, I got a lot of like. I have a lot of weird PlayStation 1 games. Like, I played the VR missions for Metal Gear Solid before I even played mm -hmm. uh, Metal Gear Solid proper. So that was, like, a weird transition from, like, oh, these weird wireframe tests are now a full game. Like, what is this? This is so weird to me. Um, and then, of course, like, from them, it kind of just became the natural progression of getting consoles and handhelds, you know, from PlayStation 2 up until now with PS4 and Xbox One. Um, so I, I've kind of always been more of a Sony person, but I did have both an Xbox 360 and now an Xbox One, and Nintendo is the only platform that I've kind of been more of like, eh, I don't really play their games that much. I'll, I'll go back and play them after the console's dead, which I'm planning to do for the Wii U because I still don't have a Wii U this generation. Uh, but once the NX comes out, I'm sure they'll kick in a nice good old price drop and I can get uh, Breath of the Wild for the Wii U. Mm. Alright, good news everyone. Oh. Everything's worked out. Oh, that's good. So everyone's good. on screen now. We did a good job. Everyone saw my underwear. That called <laughs> Steven in. And now everything's worked out. All right. I wanted to get to this keeps before. Getting weirder. Yeah, everything keeps getting weirder. Uh, generally, sometimes, like I've said, we, we show really cool PR packaging we get. Uh, kind of a perk of working in the industry. Uh, they want to show off uh, their products and whatnot. This is the Lickspear thing. It's a game coming out on PC, uh, I think P definitely PS4, and I think Vita. Uh, and like I said, they're going for that whole uh, uh, late 80s, early 90s vibe. It's actually in a VHS case. Oh, it's, nice. called, it's called Retro, Lou. Retro, yes. <laughs> uh, it's, let's see, the f it's first edition, 46 out of 100. Uh, hmm. But nice. it comes with, if I can open it up and show you guys without everything falling out. Let's see. Oh. Uh, comes with a cartridge, and the cartridge, uh, while being decorative and having cardboard on the inside, has uh, a USB slot. I plugged it in. And it has the game, the soundtrack, oh, all the trailers. Awesome. Nice. They also came with a uh, an old cassette with the whole soundtrack to it. Hmm. Uh, we grabbed some stickers some uh, a pin and uh the steam code which i have redeemed so if you freeze frame it too bad <laughs> all right anyway my intro story to gaming and if you read the story that we talked that we had uh talked about before uh you'll see it but it's really interesting it my dad actually won a national contest from pizza hut uh <laughs> like in 1993 or 1994 where they were giving away game boy which still seems kind of outdated even for that time. But I guess, you know, Pizza Hut might not have been ahead of the gaming curve in the early 90s. Anyway, I was in a full body cast. I was like three or four years old. My parents threw me down the stairs. Long story. Um, <laughs> and it was Christmas, and they don't, play, they don't play any games. They have no interest in this. eBay doesn't exist for them to sell games, uh, you know, consoles and games on. So they're like, oh, what the hell, we'll give it to them. He'll uh, play it while he's in the body cast and then grow up and be a jock just like us. That didn't happen. <laughs> um, since then, yeah, I ended up playing uh, Su Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins. Uh, I had this huge uh, Game Boy uh, game collection. And then I also eventually got Super Nintendo. And then I was like this hardcore Nintendo uh, child, like, yeah, I think everyone kind of fell into that, where you were, like, hardcore Nintendo, or hardcore Sega at the time, uh, Sony didn't really exist, and I really wanted an N64, and God bless my parents, they were trying their best and got me a PlayStation, which I eventually <laughs> loved, but, like, you know, they went into Toys R Us and probably asked for the best Nintendo system, and they just gave them the Sony, um, because it was Toys R Us. Anyway, that's my origin story. Let's get into uh, more stuff into childhood. What was your favorite childhood video game? Like, if you can think of your best childhood video game experience, what was it? Like, you know, all-nighters playing with friends, uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee. What, what did you guys play? 
Let's start with uh, Steven this time. Uh, okay. Um, so the one that immediately jumps to mind is, I guess, technically still childhood, but it's like freshman year, sophomore year of high school, I think, is when World of War came out for the Xbox 360. And I didn't own it, but my best friend at the time did. And so we played through the campaign and beat it because that was like one of the very early Call of Duties that actually had a co-op campaign. And we unlocked Nazi Zombies, which was like this weird thing to us that we didn't really know about. And we then proceeded to basically spend multiple week de- uh, weekends having sleepovers, staying up until 4 a.m. in the morning, trying to get like just one more round further than we were able to the last time in Nazi Zombies. And we, and I still have like a very beloved affection toward that mode, even though it's kind of been radically changed since then. But but both the the original uh, Nazi Zombies map and the Doris, which came with the third map pack for World at War, are, like, some of the greatest, like, 3 a.m., like, just trying to get through this last horde. Uh, Like, those are just some of, like, the best memories that I have. Right. How about you, Ryan? I think for me, it's definitely going to be the N64 generation. Uh, two game, like two games specifically, or like a couple games specifically, but uh, obviously the, the main one, Smash Brothers. Uh, Smash Brothers is my favorite game ever, like series. Uh, I love my favorite of the series is Melee, but you know it all started with with Super Smash Brothers, the original. Uh, which is probably the mm-hmm. hardest game to play now because it's just so janky and different and <laughs> everything. But, you know, it's an S 4 game, so it doesn't look great. Like, Mario's hands are literally just, like, giant triangles that are just, like, you know, huge. Um, but I just remember it fondly because, like, I, I didn't own it at the time, but my uh, one of my neighbors, he uh, he had an N64 and Super Smash Brothers, so I would literally find every excuse possible to try and go over to his house so I could play Smash Brothers. Like, literally any opportunity I could where he, like, was having people over, or if he was free, I'd be like, can I come over and play Smash Brothers? And then eventually, that Christmas, I ended up uh, getting an N64 and Smash Brothers, and I don't think I came out of my basement for, like, that entire weekend that I had that game. Amazing. Um, but then, uh, I think just some of the other ones that I remember very fondly, Mario Kart obviously being you know kind of one of the big ones that i played a lot uh goldeneye as well was another one that i don't think i owned but a lot of my friends had it and we played it and i just remember the first time ever playing it and not knowing what the hell i was doing in that game uh because i hadn't really played a lot of shooters you know especially at around that time that was only like the, the biggest one and uh, i remember specifically setting up one of the remote wall mines and somehow killing all four players simultaneously at the same time so like you know when you killed someone and they had the, just the giant curtain of blood that came down so literally it was just like dun, 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 and everyone just died all at the same time it was it was great right I'm gonna, um yeah oh, i'm going to read a few from the comments uh yeah. one of one of our favorite viewers uh, Seraphim321 says, I have pretty fond memories of multiplayer for Metal Warriors on the SNES. Not my favorite, but off my off the top of my head, it stands out. Uh, Dalo, meanwhile, says, showing my friends how to beat Resident Evil Code Veronica when they could not beat it in a month and showed them how in a few days and explaining the story. Um, so, yeah, so, some of their favorite gaming childhood gaming experience. Uh, how about you, Chris? I still really want to know why you were thrown down the stairs and you were in a body cast. Uh, I'm not letting that go. <laughs> um, um, I actually merged two stories. I mean, I'll give the TLDR for it. Um, one, I was thrown at. I was accidentally like, you know, my parents were backing up or something, uh, and didn't notice me climbing up the stairs, and I got pushed down the stairs and ended up getting stitches. That's not where I broke my uh, my leg. I broke my leg just being the dumb kid I was and, like, falling out of a high chair. And, like, early enough where that, like, apparently snapped my femur. Like, you know, supposedly the hardest bone to break and I'm the klutzy idiot kid who just, like, falls out of a high chair and kills myself. Anyway, so go ahead. That That's the quick explanation. Okay. So, <laughs> it's, uh, contrary to what Seraphim in the chat thinks, it's not Battleborn. Um, (laughs) uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of do two and I'm going to cheat a little bit on the second one. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, probably my first one is, and I've said it like on stream, like 18,000 times. The first time I really got sucked into a video game and never put it down was when my mom and dad came home and handed me Pokemon red, uh, and then handed my sister Pokemon blue. Cause I had my brother's old yellow brick game boy that was not in color and just went ham on that game. 
and it was it was the first time I could really sit there and say like I got wrapped up in a video game. Like I did not yeah. want to do anything else. Um, and then for my cheating, uh, I'm going to when I was a preteen with the original Xbox and Halo Two because it's the best multiplayer of all time. I don't care what anybody else says. All right. Yeah, it's a good one. Pokemon, like even though like Mario is kind of like the first game I played, I think Pokemon is the game that I really credit with making me like a full-on gamer. Like Pokemon Red was just like no game I had ever played was like that before, and it was just I spent so much time in that game. I think Pokemon Silver, I think I maxed out the in-game clock at like 999 hours. Like it was like insane. Like right, the fact that you could go back to Kanto was the best thing, and yeah. just random. But for going on real nostalgia. Did any one of you guys get that super marketing ploy VHS in the mail from the Pokemon company? No. no. Or was it just me? So I don't. You could probably find this online somewhere. But it was the VHS that showed up, and it was literally just marketing for the television show. It showed like a preview of the first two episodes. It showed all of the little collectibles on a table, even including ones that were only released in Japan to make you want them, and showed you highlights of the game. And it just showed up in the mail one day. Before like That's Pokemon hit the US, this thing just showed up. It was the best. I wonder if I could find that. I bet it could go for a lot of money. I think it would. I'm gonna try and find that. <laughs> All right. So my favorite, or at least the most distinct childhood memories, I think, with games, uh, were number one, the first time I played uh, Super Mario 64. Because up to that point, I played a fair amount of Game Boy. Um, I believe Game Boy Color, I might get that history out of order, but definitely Super Nintendo, and like, you know, video games were 2D, that was what video games were like, um, I never played Star Fox, so I never had like that brief introduction as a mm. Nintendo gamer from 2D to 3D, uh, then when Super Mario 64 came out, it just like, as a, as a kid, it just like blew my mind, uh, the second most distinctive moment in gaming for me <laughs> as a kid has to be getting Pokemon Red. I got it for Easter and literally just nonstop playing it. Um, all right, so I want I want everyone to talk about what their, I guess, least favorite moment in gaming as a child was. Like, you ever get in trouble? Like, you know, your parents just come in and see you're playing a game at like three in the morning and just whip your ass or whatever. Oh, I was expecting something way. I was expecting something way more like scandalous than. <laughs> <laughs> Like your, mom, like your mom, weird. Let's just take it there. Like your, <laughs> just, your mom catches you like playing like Dead or Alive or something, like Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball, volleyball or something like that. <laughs> yep. Or like Conquer's Bad Fur Day or something like that. So mm, that was but, a good one. But those experiences totally exist. So what are your guys' experiences with that? What uh, what was your oh shit moment? All right, let's oh, go, Chris. Chris. <laughs> so I got a I got a fun one. Uh, so uh, my parents were separated, but when uh on christmas one day my dad got me xbox live okay so they had watched me play halo 2 doing like the one-on-ones and they were like this is so intense like they actually liked watching me play the video game so one day he came over and i was playing just a random game and i'm a 12 year old on the internet and just random obscenities just get start getting shouted in my direction while he asked for the television for their voices to come through the TV as well so he could hear what everyone was saying. And some British dude decided to recite the poem, uh, Hickory Dickory Dock, Your Mom is Sucking My Blank. Mm. And my dad looked at me and he's like, what have I brought you into? <laughs> my dad was also, uh, exactly. My dad's also an Irishman who's been smoking since he was 13. So you just heard him talking like this, yelling at the guy for speaking like that in front of his son. Uh, it was a fun okay. moment. Okay, Ryan. I don't know if I have one like specifically like that. I think my thing with uh, when I was younger, I used to be. And it's funny nowadays because I love them. I used to be terrified of horror games. Like, like legitimately, like just just could not ha deal with them. Uh, I remember when uh, my family we used to share a uh, shore house in Point Pleasant, and we would always go to the arcades and stuff like that. I remember they always had the House of the Dead machines, and I would have to walk past them like this because I could not just 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 I was so terrified, like I couldn't watch it and handle it. 
And uh, one of the families that we rented with their son had a Sega Saturn, and he had Resident Evil on it, the original one. And so I'd, like, try to watch him, but I'd have to be like this, like, covering my eyes, like, peeking out of it, because I just couldn't, like, get scared. I actually, that also ties into my story, which I think I've told in the shotcast before, uh, before you guys came on. But uh, I remember renting the uh, Resident Evil remake for GameCube when I was, like, 12. And I was still just on the cusp of kind of getting over scary games, but still kind of scared. So I rented Resident Evil Remake for GameCube. I played it for an hour. I got to the room where you find the first zombie where his head turns around in slow motion. Got so scared, shut off the GameCube and returned the game the next day because I just couldn't handle it. it was like... <laughs> So that's that's my moment. It's just and nowadays I love scary games. It's it's funny, but when I think about it, it was just that was always my thing. Like I just was like such a scaredy cat as a kid. You did say the story before because Dalo says he remembers it. Uh, Seraphim yeah. says honestly, <laughs> my parents were pretty cool with gaming as long as I did well in school. I could pretty much play what I want. My mom sat down and drew a few Final Fantasy VIII characters for me after she watched me play some. That's that's pretty cool. That's a great memory. Um, I'm I'm gonna give mine a bit earlier. Uh, I, I think I might have mentioned this on the shock cast before, and if I haven't, then I'm sorry, because this is one of my great failings in life. Um, <laughs> like not watching Star Wars? Uh, yeah, like not watching Star Wars. Uh, when <laughs> I got my PlayStation 1, uh, I played my first RPG ever, uh, which was Final Fantasy VII. What a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and maybe it wasn't my. I guess I guess Pokemon was my first RPG, but wh- whatever. Uh, my first really big RPG, and I, you know, being ten or twelve, really needed help with it, because uh, I wasn't a smart kid and didn't know how to get through the level because it was hard. So I went to Game Facts, found the answer because Game Facts had great facts for everything, uh, walkthroughs and all that, and then said, "This is really helpful. I'm going to print it out." <laughs> um, so I printed out the uh, GameFAQ walkthrough for uh, Final Fantasy VII, uh, which came out to like uh, maybe like an entire ream of paper that I had like hidden <laughs> under my bed. But this is when you know, like right now, we're kind of in a blessed era where like you know, ink is like twenty bucks. If you remember, in like the early two thousands, late nineties, ink was like a hundred dollars for a refill. So we like I we had a new cartridge, we just blew through it. Uh, and it literally took like eight hours to print the whole thing. And I, for whatever reason, I thought stopping the printer would have broken it. So I refused to do it. And <laughs> I just like, when I kept closing the door to like the computer room we had, I'm like, no one go in there. <laughs> um, and I, I got found out and hollered at, <laughs> hollered at. Uh, I, I don't think I saw that game for like another two months, but it was a very uh... useful printout. Yeah, there's some other comments that are uh, good comments in here. I don't know if we read okay. any of these, but uh, Dalo said that OG RE1 is awesome. Uh, Seraphim321 said, honestly, my parents were pretty cool with gaming as long as I did yeah, well. We oh, wait, did we have... yeah. oh, we did. Oh, we did. Sorry. Oh, we did. Uh, we okay, did. sorry. Sorry. Yeah, Seraphim also said, uh, worst memory, though, is the first PS1 I have that my sister's husband handed down to me had to be flipped upside down to work. I remember that being a thing <laughs> where there was like something with PlayStation 1s, I think, where the, the laser, I guess, that ran the CDs had issues. So you yeah. had to like, flip it upside down, do that. Uh, Dalo also that said one sick. of my one of my favorite gaming experiences was the original four dot hack games, uh, buying them one at a time, finishing them, and having to wait for four months at a time. All right. Oh, yeah, but I, I remember, I remember, but uh, sorry, like like Seraphim pointed out, yeah, I remember some of those weird, like obviously when we were kids, there was the whole thing with blowing into your cartridges to make them work again, which was you know just always a thing. I remember when my uh, my first 360, uh, it didn't red ring, but it had some other kind of issue that bricked it. And so I ended up doing the the towel trick for a little while, which I don't know if you guys remember oh, or know no. at all, where you had to wrap it in a towel and you basically overheated the console and it triggered some kind of thing that would let it, it would basically like short term revive your console. So I did that and it, it worked again for another couple hours, but then I think it just died again and I had to replace it. I so, smacked right. my 360 after the red ring and it worked for another month. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It was just like, man, old consoles were just resilient. Like, they could just friggin', like, you could throw them down a staircase and they'd be fine. Apparently not like Lou. So it's like... <laughs> I am still somewhat functioning. Anyway, uh, it seems like Azario's here over in the, uh, over in the stream. He, he fondly remembers Dot .hack, I believe. So, yeah. um... I got another story, but I'm gonna see if uh, Stephen, you got a you got a good disaster piece kind of story about gaming. 
Um, not like early gaming. There's no like disaster thing. I think something that I consider embarrassing now is like memorizing the cutscene in the original Kingdom Hearts where it's the one but right before you fight Riku the second time, and it's yeah. always like the like, oh, you'll never take Kairi's heart. There's a light within that'll never give out, or something uh, like that. that yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I, I heard that so many times because that fight was so hard. Um, and then. <laughs> <laughs> the um the only like i guess the only like rage moment i've ever had was trying to platinum modern warfare 2 which i still haven't done and it's because there's the missions on veteran and because i didn't really have anybody in the house to play with i would do it by myself and just trying to get through that game on veteran uh, with the co-op stuff was so oh. hard that there was a, there was a moment where like i i punched the wall and i put a <laughs> hole in the wall this that was... i then Oh, this I is then... World at War, right? No, yeah. no, uh, Modern Warfare 2. Oh, uh, Modern Warfare 2. Um... Yeah. Um, no, I didn't even bother with World at War veteran. I, that's impossible. Right. <laughs> um... I, uh, I remember uh, doing that with um, Modern Warfare, the original, with the uh, the Mile High Club mission on veteran. Uh, yeah. oh, and God. I, I like, for, I think, four hours straight, and I eventually got through it. But, man, that was a, that was a challenge. Yeah, no. That was the only time where, like, I, I actually physically wanted to break something <laughs> because of a video game. And I did. And then I had to, you know, my parents came home later and I, I had to be like, yeah, I, I kind of got mad and did this thing. And now you have to cover it up because it, it's awful and it's in the living room. Um, so yeah, that's like the only like bad or like terrible moment. I've actually had a pretty good history of video games, I guess. I don't know. All right. Yeah, I mean, that all sounds fairly PG. Uh, we're gonna go into inappropriate here, kind uh, of, kind of <laughs> along the, the lines of the uh, dead or alive beach volleyball. Uh, <laughs> so I was never a Sega kid, and I really, I really enjoyed. Uh, this is where you guys are already gonna start knowing it's bad. I really enjoyed playing Sonic stuff. Oh uh, God, <laughs> where is um, this headed? I don't. I might leave. So me and my friends, uh, we we knew of fairly decent sites. I, mostly, a lot of it was like Newgrounds and stuff, where you could find like Flash animation versions of uh, uh, yeah. Sonic, where, oh, no. where they just ripped off. Yeah, that uh, enough uh, enough of that kind of led. You know, you, you look up Sonic in the search bar, and you get those like really like really really bad like awkward Flash Sonic sex games. Uh, which we had no clue was a thing at the time. Because by that point, I think it was when it was just starting. Uh, and we happened to click on it just as soon as my parents were walking in and seeing what we were doing on the computer. Uh, so, yes, that, uh, that was probably the worst moment of my life where <laughs> I, I had to sympathize with all the Sonic... Uh, why? Because you were looking at Sonic like fanfic porn, or because your parents walked in watching you, <laughs> so watching. Them. Yeah, like I had to like I, I instantly knew at that moment. I don't know moment. what's worse. Yeah, like I I don't know I don't know we never really talked about it since so I'm not sure if they like they look at bronies now and they're just like our son did that he might still do that. <laughs> they probably think you still do it. It's why they don't talk about it. Do you still do it? I, I mean, I don't want to talk about my, my extra adventures, but... So um, you still do it. <laughs> uh, not a chance. I, I, we, we won't go into my hate, my newfound hatred of Sonic. Basically, that moment scarred me for Sonic for the rest of my life. I, I was one of the early Sonic haters. Um, anyway, anyway, uh, let's move on to a new nostalgia bit. Do we have any good ideas of where this conversation should go? Because I am a terrible host. Um, so we talked about our favorite gaming experience. We talked about our, our misadventures. How about like, you know, what was, when you were growing up, what was the party game? Every, I mean, you know, very generally everyone plays Smash Bros. Everyone played Mario Kart. But like, if you could think of like a party game that was super specific to you and your friends, what would that be? No comments. Nothing. I guess I'll go. Um, you go first, yeah. Yeah, my my friends and I, uh, even though we knew there were much, much better games out there, we were obsessed with Kirby's Air Ride. 
Just um, <laughs> that's an amazing game. You shut your mouth. I I mean I I loved it so much that when they had that like false reveal, I think they were revealing Rosalina for like, uh, for Smash Four, uh, but it started out with Kirby riding, uh, riding his Warp Star. I thought for certain they were gonna announce Kirby's Air Ride, and I like nearly exploded as, as a human being in like the middle of a law school class because that's where I was at the time. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we play City Trial and just days days on end like full nights just playing kirby's era which i've since learned a lot of people think is a very mediocre game i just did not know that also sneak king we loved the uh, burger king oh my god <laughs> <laughs> what so much so we just met with a, things about that, was, that was met with a collective groan by all of us <laughs> like <laughs> Can we just recite what we've learned about Lou so far in this podcast? <laughs> he was thrown down the stairs as a child. Yeah. He apparently plays Sonic porn flash games, <laughs> and he loves Sneak King. This Love is just Sneak getting King. really weird. All right, <laughs> well, getting really long. The it got so, I, and I wish I could show the picture because I do have a picture. But uh, it, our love of Sneak King uh, was so much that we actually got a Burger King mask, and at times would sneak around in it. Around local that, establishments. That's that's not. You're not I, helping your case. No, no, I'm not trying. To, it's it's like when we were like 14 I'm or done. something. Is, has the statute of limitations passed or something? Like, why, why why are you now talking about this? It's all got to come out at some point. All right, I, so I mean, yeah, I guess. All right, so, it, please. Speaking of awful games that we all that you know my friend group like there are any awful games that you know are awful now but in the past you guys adored i don't know about awful games but i think for a super specific party games like i mentioned before like the nc4 games that i played um i think the big thing was in high school and then like early co- you know like a little bit through college my friends and i would get together for land parties in our 360s and bring those and i think our favorite thing was like it would mostly be a lot of halo because it was the most accommodating land game but we would just come up with a lot of really dumb game modes in halo 3 and just play those um so we had a couple ones we had uh sharks which was this like variant on uh, zombies but with like zombies that were literally like like lightning fast and it was just dumb and stupid it was just like with that and then another mode that we had called run bitch run was the name of it that we called <laughs> it, was just... <laughs> it was basically i forget how to exactly play but it was basically there would be like a time where like the people the the people <laughs> like uh, would be on foot and get a head start and have to run. And then an, uh, a bunch of other people on the other team would get warthogs that would span a spell on after a certain amount of time, and then they would have to run over the other people. So that's why it was called Run, Bitch, Run. Was like... <laughs> um, and then, right. uh, yeah, then, then we play other ones like Griff Ball and things like that. But it was just a lot of those were just like us messing around in, in, uh, in Forge and Halo 3 and making up really dumb, funny game modes. Hmm. Right. Um... All right, so in the comments, we have a few uh, shout-outs. Uh, Dalo says, everyone considers the classic Resident Evil games awful, but I think they're fantastic. Does that count? I don't know. I, I think it's kind of split on Resident Evil games. I think they're still well-beloved by critics, even nowadays. Uh, I think it, it, the, the, the controls definitely have age, but I feel like that plays into its charm. Okay. Um, and what, wow. what, what was the other comment? I'm, I'm currently searching for that Sneak King photo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Seraphim, we don't, don't remember the name, but, uh, shout out to the 7-Up well, game where you played as I, little 7-Up I, I, with I sunglasses. In, I, I put it in there. It's Cool Spot. That's the name of the game. Not Pepsi That's Man. the name of the game? I thought you were just talking about the spot. I thought you were just describing him. No, it's the 7-Up game. It's called Cool Spot. It's the name of it. I remember playing that. That was an awesome game, and by that I mean best it was game terrible. Game ever. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the best thing in the world. Oh, <laughs> man. Sega, Gen- Sega Genesis had no limit of, like, t- games that are just terrible by every standard now, but when you were a kid were amazing. Like, I was obsessed with Altered Beast when I was a kid, and, oh, man, I had so much fun. I, I, I became a master at Altered Beast, which is, like, the lowest accomplishment that I feel like anyone could have in life nowadays. <laughs> I, like, I'm fairly certain you're right. I feel like Lou's about to beat it with whatever right, yeah. he's doing. Okay, so Uh-oh. here comes the picture. You guys aren't going to see it, I guess, the people who I'm actually talking to, unless you're looking at the stream. But I'm, I'm going to throw it in now. Oh, I am. 
All right. Okay. Well, it's you, delayed. I, you, have, so. you have clothes on. So this is. Uh, he didn't answer the question. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I asked I, if you had clothes on. I have a robe on. Uh, so that's most close. Oh, there it is. Okay, I can see it now. Uh, oh wow. Yeah. Um, oh, is... I. Jeez. Um. So so let's get I, opinions on this. How how awful is this? Uh, I don't know what to say. I I really. It's the king's. So not only that, but keep in mind, I'm posing in front of a church on yeah, Christmas because yeah, yeah. it Christmas is the king's Christian birthday. Church. So the, the, oh, geez. yeah. So um, <laughs> that that's something. I'm gonna take that off now. Uh, but oh, wait, hold on. I'm on a Red Bull ad. You leave that up. You wait till this ad's done. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, I feel I feel like okay, you, you can take it down now. <laughs> you, you look like like um. Like you were about to be in a video of like an early Mega sixty four skit, um, oh where God. it's just like <laughs> you're walking around. Life. Yeah, like <laughs> sneaking in real life. Um, the the bathrobe. I feel like the bathrobe really completes the outfit because I don't know. It pulls what, it together. Well. Yeah, I don't know. Like, what clothes could you wear while wearing the Burger King mask? Like, there's nothing really that you could Naked. wear that's that would. The other. That's the only other option. That's like... yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that ooh, man. Okay, all you're, right. You're welcome for that. That that's your daily dose of laughter <laughs> from me. Um, oh jeez. So yeah, that that's my nostalgia. Uh, mm. wh- what were we talking about before I interrupted with myself? <laughs> uh, I don't even know. Uh, hey, any of you remember the first Spider-Man game for PS1 that was just Spider-Man, and it was from Activision. Um, no, I didn't. I didn't play it. Did but it I come know. before oh. or after the movie? Uh, it was before it was the right movie. before the, the movie. movie. It was. It wasn't a tie-in game. Oh, oh man, that like that game. I still think is like one of the best Spider-Man games. It's like, it's got Stan Lee doing like commentary in it as the narrator. It perfectly has like the Sinister Six in it, and it's not like some dumb like. Oh, they got to do the thing with the. Oh, other there thing. goes the Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's he's great. Um, oh, I just I, I was looking through like all the old games that I have because I have a spreadsheet because I have a spreadsheet for everything. Um, and I saw that and I was like, oh, that's like that's a game that I still think is great even today, uh, even like today's standards because we haven't had a good Spider-Man game since like mm, a while. Hopefully, have one coming soon. So yeah, yeah. hopefully it looks good. Keep our fingers crossed. Um. Yeah, I basically I, I think we've gotten a good chunk of our childhood out in this video, for better or for worse. Of course. Now gonna look at Lou the same way again. Oh no, mm-hmm. no, absolutely not. Uh, so I think it's it's about time we wrap up. We wrap up. We're about an hour in, though we could likely go on like this for hours. Um, so let's go very quickly into uh, the releases coming out this week. Meanwhile, Steven, what games are you yeah. playing? Because you never said Oh, uh, I'm, I'm still playing Verdun. Um, it's tough because <laughs> there there was about 30 people playing it total last night. So, uh, yeah, not a lot of people playing that, unfortunately. Uh, it's rough, but it's it's got some charm to it because it's like World War One and it's super World War I. Um, other than that, I haven't really been playing much i feel like i'm kind of not (laughs) super into games right now kind of just being like okay you know games are coming out the fall is coming up really want to play like titanfall 2 and some of that type of stuff but right now it's kind of like okay you know stuff for review and that's about it so all right looking forward to the witness i guess yeah getting mind fucked um (laughs) all right so (laughs) this week uh starting tomorrow we've got noi to love Devolution on 3DS. We have Grand Prix Rock and Racing for Wii U. On the 16th, we have Mountain Blade Warband on PS4. On the 16th, Psychopath Mandatory Happiness coming out on PC, PS4, mm. and Vita. Uh, we have a review up for that already. Very good game. I think 8, 8.5 region. Um, NBA 2K17 uh, on th- uh, coming out on the 16th for 360, PC, PS3, PS4, and Xbox One. We also have, oh my god, I can't pronounce this. On the 16th, Valkyrie Drive, Bikuni, Bikuni, uh, for Vita. Sure. 
Why not? Well, let's go with it. Uh, also, on the 16th, Dragon Quest Seven: Fragments of the Forgotten mm. Past. So, look out for that. We're going to have the review up tomorrow. I think. Or tonight. One of the two. Yeah. Um, be able to. Then, fast forward to the, 20, the 20th, oh. where literally every game's coming out. I'm just going <laughs> to list them off. We've got Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse for 3DS. Criminal... Uh, uh, actually, no. Criminal Girls 2 was delayed. But we'll have the review up by then, so that's good. Uh, Cossacks 3 for PC. Um, oh, yeah. Destiny Rise of Iron for PS4, Xbox One. Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters Daybreak Special Gigs for Vita. Uh, Lithium Inmate 39 PS4. Dear Esther Landmark Edition for PS4 and Xbox One. Jazz Punk Director's Cut for PS4. To Who Scarlet Curiosity for to- PS4. I think it's to- Toho. I got yelled at that last week for really? it. Yeah. You're fired. <laughs> um, yeah. Lickspear. Uh, possibly not coming out that day. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it isn't. Uh, the developers aren't sure we've been talking about it so that is what's coming out this week uh hmm. yeah i believe that's everything so let's go into the plugs uh you can find us on most social media sites uh facebook instagram uh twitter just looking up dual shockers uh if you're looking for us on youtube it's youtube.com slash dstv originals uh, meanwhile, if you're looking for us on Twitch, if, if you want to be part of this and hear all of my awful stories on Wednesdays, come join us at 8.30 Eastern, twitch.tv slash DualShockersLive. Uh, finally, of course, we have DualShockers.com, where we have all the best reviews, news, editorials, all that fun stuff. Uh, they help keep the lights on. Uh, what is happening in the chat? I'm not even going to question this. No, the Skype chat. Some, <laughs> some oh. Funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw. Okay. So, <laughs> what's everyone's Twitter? Uh-oh. My, uh oh. Oh, my Twitter is at Sneak King. No, I'm kidding. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see. I'm going to see uh, who has that, that, actually. It's, uh, okay. Oh, God, don't. I, uh, my name is at Ryan Lightfoot. <laughs> I wish it was Sneak King, though. Should I do. Oh, I'll just do both. Two uh, some guy named one Matt. Day. Oh, and the guy's picture is sneaking. <laughs> <laughs> he only has 34 followers, though. Just oh, man. Po- go follow him. Back. Yeah. We have... I have to. I have to. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's going to get a whole influx of new followers and be like, what the fuck? Like, is yeah. this... Like... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I just, I just followed him, so... <laughs> Can we please put that in the description of every single place we post this chat, this podcast? Follow Sneaking at, at Sneaking. <laughs> i just followed him so <laughs> yeah oh man all right so ryan what is your twitter handle uh at ryan Weitzer, that's it all right chris oh uh, you can find me at at sonic fan for life <laughs> <laughs> that's probably at, taken it's at mr moxie steven you can follow me at twitter at number eight axel that's n-o the number eight and then axel Okay, and you can follow me if you want to at Luke and Taldi and find out more about how my parents abused me. Um, anyway. Hold on, Chris, just a p- quick PSA. So Sonic Fan 4 Life is, in fact, uh, available. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yes. I saw it. So <laughs> is it. Is it spelled Sonic normally, the number four, and then L-Y-F? That's oh, what I looked at. Both, both of them yeah, are available. available. <laughs> so go for it. <laughs> in case this Pokemon thing doesn't work out for me, I'll just go. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. 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 All right, well, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you if you've been uh, watching us live. Thank you if you've been listening along on MP3. Uh, This has been an interesting shock cast, to say the least. Uh, Next week, more mainstream stuff. We're going to be talking about TGS. We're going to be talking about all the new reveals. I think a Digimon game just got announced while we were doing this. Uh, So that's really super interesting. But, yeah, we'll we'll be doing less weird stuff, less ASMR, less me talking about Sonic in a sexual way and sneaking around. Don't don't, don't just ASMR. (laughs) I feel like after Giuseppe watches this podcast, next week it's just going to be just Giuseppe for an hour. No one tell Giuseppe what happened here. (laughs) He'll never find out. I'm looking at you, Donald. You stay silent. We'll buy your silence. (laughs) All right. it's It's Digimon World Next Order. Okay. But only PS4, no Vita, weirdly enough. No, no. That's not that weird anymore. All right. Well, anyway, thanks again, everyone, for joining. It's been a lot of fun. We're going to go into the theme song. Bye, everyone.
Bye. 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 Bye.